Good swing here, Matty. Come on. No, no, no. Not again. It's happened. <sighs> Another driver that has found the trouble. Not a bad thing for this lesson because today's lesson we're talking about trouble shots. How we're going to play out of trees, rough, bunkers, water hazards, whatever it may be. We are going to solve all those problems for you. So let's get stuck into this lesson right now. So we found ourselves in the trouble, the first one playing out of trees. How are we going to do it and how are we going to stop wasting shots? Because even if we have hit our drive into the trees, it's not the end of the world. We can reset by getting back to the fairway or as close as possible to it with as little stress as possible. That's where the big key lies. Don't make it any harder than you have to. Already, this is a difficult shot. The ball's a little bit above my feet. I've got a small little tree starting to sprout here. I've got two this way. I've got another one behind me. It's a little bit roughy. It's just not nice. But what I would see is people say, well, oh, bit of a big gap here. If I hit a seven iron now or a six iron and I hook it round there, I can get right down to the bottom. Actually, if I got my rescue out, it sat pretty nicely. I could, if it all comes together, if all the stars align, I reckon I could get it on the green here. That'd be decent as opposed to, I've got the biggest gap in the world here and all I need to do really is have enough club to keep it underneath the canopy and get it lifted up towards the start of the fairway or even just the rough and get it back into play so first things first when you are in the trees don't go biting off more than you can chew like i said a moment ago reset the clock you're only here for one you can be back in the middle and a bit further down for two you've probably got a shot on the hole so if you're down in the fairway another 50 60 yards normally further than your driver would be you've got to get a pretty easy chance of getting on the green for three so make it as easy as possible and like i say a couple of things that you need to make sure when you are doing it don't pick a lofted club out of the trees if i were to stand here now with my gap wedge, my lob wedge, my pitching wedge, even my nine iron, the canopy of the tree up here, as soon as I hit that, it's in my way. Think about what your ball is going to launch like with your selected club. I know with my six iron that I've got out here now, it's a pretty flat flight. I'm not going to be making a full swing as well, so it's not going to come out as high as normal. What we want to try and do is keep a little bit of loft off it as well. So we're going to feel that we punch it a little bit more. So for these sorts of shots, we're going to narrow the stance a little bit. We're going to lean a bit more weight into our left or our lead foot. And then we're going to go down the grip so we're near the bottom of it. And then, like I say, half a swing and feel like we keep the loft off and just punch it. Then once you've got that technique solved, pick the easiest gap for yourself, dependent on your skill level and the probability of pulling off the shot. Pick the easiest part to go out. I could hook a six iron down there, but the benefits of doing it would probably be I'd get 10, 20 yards closer. I can play out sideways here and still go to the other side of the fairway and have 150 in as opposed to 140. So I've picked a spot that I want to land my ball back into the fairway. I've gone down my grip, a smaller stance and weight towards my lead side. Then I'm going to punch it out and feel that I keep it below that canopy of the tree. Do not waste another shot by hitting it up there, rattling it around and dropping back down under it. Pick a gap that you can flight the ball through with ease and get back into play. Really easy, simply done. And if anything, I've probably gone running a little bit into the rough there because I hit it too well. So real simple stuff, make it as easy as possible. Don't compound the problem. Let's go and take a look how we're gonna play out of thick, heavy rough. Okay, so tip number two, how to play out of deep rough. As you look at me now on the camera, you can probably, well, you won't be able to see my shoes, I would imagine. You might just see this one, but my left foot here is pretty much buried. And as you see the lie of the golf ball there, 
it's pretty disgusting. It's really sat down. It's not something where I can even put the club into the golf ball and see that the ball is sat directly behind it. There's a big clump of grass there. So when we get into these situations, we've got to understand that impact the impact between the ball and the face is really going to be compromised we're going to see a lot of grass in between that face and the ball so that's going to sap a lot of energy out of it which is going to take a lot of distance out of it also the flight of it it's not going to get up out as quickly because of this heavy wet grass at the moment it's going to come out flat it's just going to flop out there's going to be no force in there so first things first if you do get into a situation like this just think to yourself, is that ball going to react like it would do if I was playing off the fairway? No, would be your answer straight away. Okay, well, I probably can't use the same club that I would do on the fairway because I'm 160 yards away at the moment, so I've got my eight iron. But like I just said, that's not going to react like I would be if I was 10 paces over there coming out of the fairway. It wouldn't go 160 yards. It wouldn't come out at the same height. It would come out horrible flat. So what I've got to do straight away is get rid of that eight iron because it's not going to work for me. What I've then got to do is select something with more loft that is going to take it up out of the rough. I've also got to now factor in that I'm not going to be getting it the same distance. It might run when I get it out. It might get out, bounce and have a little bit more run than I would normally see from the pitching wedge I've selected here where I would expect it to one bounce and stop dead or even spin back. This might have 10, 15 yards of run because I'm not going to get anywhere near as much backspin on the golf ball. So it would come out and start to scuttle forwards. Knowing that it's not going to go as far as well, I've now got to factor in, well, where am I going to land it? What am I going to do? There's no point for me if there was water at 100 yards, I was trying to get over and think well this is only really going to go 80 aiming straight over the water because I'm going to be feeding the fish if I do that so you've then got to take into account once you've gone down in club to get it up out of the rough well where does that ball fly to and where does it run to play it to a spot that is going to leave you with a better chance of then getting on for your final one onto the green in terms of technique as we go through the shot what we'd want to see again is probably go down the grip a little bit more this way we can be a little bit closer to the head and we're going to be able to get a little bit steeper in our swing seeing that we're going to chop it out a little bit more we're going to want to grip it a little bit tighter as well hold on tighter to the club because of the thick nature of the rough the club head's going to get tangled up as it impacts and it's going to try and flip the head so if we've got a tighter grip on here i can at least try and limit the amount of twist that there is on the club head when I stand to it, I'm going to put my ball pretty central or if anything, I'm going to move it slightly back to ensure that I do get a little bit steeper and chop it out, try and limit the amount of grass in between the face and the ball. I'm also going to lean my weight towards the target now. Again, everything aiding here to really hack through this horrible, nasty rough. And that then will see that I would be able to get it up and get it out of this lie. So let's give that a go. I've selected a pitching wedge instead of my iron to get it up out. I've gone down my grip so I can get a little bit steeper on my swing. I've got a tight grip to make sure I don't let the club spin ball middle to slightly back, weight forwards, and then from there, let's get this hack in motion. And as we see there, I didn't even have a follow through, and the ball's only flown 70 yards total. It's running another 10 now, but it's up out, and I've not aimed directly over the water, I've aimed left of it to see that I'm gonna be in play for my next shot. Guys, before we get stuck into this third and final trouble shot, I want you to get better at golf. So hit that subscribe button down below. Join me every week for your free golf lessons here on the channel. Just click that button. It's totally free. Turn on the bell notification and you won't miss another lesson. Let's have a look at this third and final trouble shot. So as you can see, we are in the bunker here. It's a place that I would imagine many scorecards have suffered because of these places. And what we tend to find is that we would either thin them into the face, we get it rocketing out over the green, we would duff it and it would only go a couple of yards in front of us, and we're just not getting out every time. So I think from today's lesson, what I want to make sure is that you're getting out every single time out of these bunkers. Granted, there will be the odd time where it's, you know, plugged under the face or an absolutely horrible lie. But if it's just a, you know, a bog standard bunker shot here, you know, if I were to imagine my balls come in, 
and rolls ooh, a little bit too far away from me it comes into the bunker and rolls back down into a okay-ish lie we want to make sure that we're able to get out of that and i want you to take two things from this number one we need confidence the amount of times i get into a bunker lesson with people or see it on the golf course where they're scared that if they were to make a full swing and hit down into the golf ball it's going to go flying off my normal 60 70 yards with my lob wedge so we see something where we go and stop and would you know it it's back in my divot and now even got a harder shot there was no commitment to it when you hit this bunker shot there's going to be an awful lot of sand between the face and the ball so it's going to sap the um, the speed out of the golf ball and really take that distance that that travels out of the golf ball down to a minimum so we've got to have confidence firstly that we can make a full swing and as we do it we would go into our follow through see we've taken that little bit of a divot into this balance finish and off we go we've got the confidence to know that as i would do this if i just clip one off here there full swing just took a little bit too much sand but it's not gone out a million miles in fact it's only gone about seven yards away from me so number one when we get in a bunker make sure that we've got confidence number two the big thing that I would see from people here would be that as they come into the bunker, we're going to see that they want to try and help it up. Now, I would imagine you've taken your most lofted club when you get into the bunker, whether it's a sand wedge, it might be time to um, actually invest in a lob wedge to help you get out of here. Because as we can see now, this lip of the bunker is above my belt height. So I've got to get some loft out of it pretty quickly. So we're going to take something with loft. And then from there, what we don't want to do is try and help it out. We've got to make sure that as I stand to it, now I get a good solid base I get the weight in my lead leg so I can feel a lot of pressure here about 70% in my lead leg and then I'm aiming now to try and take each time a little bit of sand about an inch behind the golf ball and see that it would be like a five pound note or a dollar bill I'm going to just try to dig that same amount of sand out each time so even if you're in the practice bunker have a few of these swings where you put a line in imagining that's an inch behind the golf ball and try and take that same amount of sand each time if you can do that and we keep the weight forwards we're not going to see that with an unconfident swing and weight going back i don't get the club burying into the sand behind me or i don't thin it i'm able to let the club slide under and pop the ball out so good stance i'm committed to making a good length of swing here with a little bit of speed i'm going to take an inch of sand and keep that weight in my left side and there beautiful about 10 foot past the flag and a little bit of spin on it and coming back so if you're struggling with these trouble shots make sure you're playing it right out of the trees make sure you're using the right club and adopting those techniques from the rough and then when we get into the bunker be confident that you can make a full swing get some weight in that lead leg and let the club go underneath and from there we should escape the trouble because i know we all find ourselves in it when we're out on the golf course guys i hope you've enjoyed this lesson this week if you have do remember to hit the subscribe button down below turn on the bell notifications and i'll see you in your next lesson